This is Dr. Tom Burdak, and we're talking about how to take care of your rheumatoid arthritis, including new research and new treatment. We're starting now. Rheumatoid arthritis is the second most common type of arthritis around the world behind osteoarthritis. This is actually an inflammatory disease. So chronic inflammation in your joints, it can attack both hands, both feet equally. It's characterized as an autoimmune disease, and this causes inflammation in the joints. This can lead to serious complications without proper treatment and control of joint inflammation. So I see a lot of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. This has a potential to go one of two ways. It can either get really bad, where basically fingers, toes, everything fuses together, it's hard to move, or with some of the new treatments, it can go really good with a lot of improvements. There's medications, there's diet changes, there's weight loss changes, there's a lot of physical therapy changes that can help in managing rheumatoid arthritis. There are medications for rheumatoid arthritis. The most common and the easiest is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are your ibuprofen type medications and are commonly used to decrease inflammation and pain in rheumatoid arthritis. Anti-inflammatories usually don't get the job done, but they're usually what people start off with first. If that's not improving, get evaluated and get some of the more advanced treatments. But prescription medications can be much longer acting and have much better effects. DMARDs stand for disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. These are the most common ones and they're generally well understood and have been used historically as the main treatment to prevent progression and symptoms. There are some newer medications out, but these are oldies, but still goodies. The oldest type of medication is steroids. These are used to control acute inflammatory events, but these should be very careful. There's a lot of potential side effects that can cause issues. You don't want to be on a steroid long term. These are more if you're going on vacation or have an important work event and you have a flare up, but you don't want to take steroids continuously. There's a lot of side effects. Another good option is injectable treatments. Injectable treatments, these are your corticosteroid injections. These can provide relief from joint pain and inflammation in joints. I do these quite a bit if somebody has a flare up, but it's not something you want to keep doing continuously. There are other options such as platelet recombinant plasma injections or PRP injections. These can be very effective as well. I love PRP. You can withdraw it from the body so it's all natural and you have a vial of whole blood. You spin it down so it separates the fluid on top and the red blood cells and the platelets at the bottom. That means it's platelet rich. And now you can take those good factors, those anti-inflammatory factors in your body and inject them back into the painful area with good results. At the same time, there's stem cell injections. These show a lot of promise, but they're very expensive. Like the ones I've looked at recently are about 1800 bucks and the results are not guaranteed by any means. So that's something to consider. As far as medications as well, there's a lot of excellent options such as biological medications. These are extremely well studied now. And I work with a lot of great rheumatologists. If they can get their patients to qualify for these, essentially some injections that are once a month or so, these can have long lasting effects where people can essentially go through their whole life decades without significant issues. So there's a lot of amazing medications available for rheumatoid arthritis that are making huge changes for people now and huge improvements. The first stages of treatment of rheumatoid arthritis are all the stuff we're gonna talk about later in this video, but medication-wise, you wanna start with anti-inflammatories or the disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs. If you have advanced disease, biologic agents make a lot of sense, and if you have flare-ups, corticosteroid injections, or even oral medications for flare-ups. So if these are so good, why aren't they used at the beginning? Well, they're expensive to qualify for, and I'm talking like tens of thousands of dollars potentially for the year, and they're not always needed. For a lot of people, you'll do good without needing these, but in advanced disease, these are actually molecular markers that can prevent the course of the disease, but you have to get approved by your insurance, and you have to get approved by your rheumatologist, most likely. They're the only ones that can usually do it. 
and you can combine them with the other ones. They're a different mechanism of action, but I've seen this prevent significant disease and it's made excellent results. What about surgery for rheumatoid arthritis? There are surgical advances now, such as total joint replacements and surgeries. But the problem is, even though these surgeries work extremely well, and I mean they do work extremely well, they're way better than they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. These joint replacements, you have to think, you're putting the joint replacement into soft bone that might not hold the replacement well. So if you're not getting to the inflammation or root cause, then you may need to replace that joint that's already been replaced, and that usually does not go well. And the trick with rheumatoid arthritis is, you have to diagnose it properly. A lot of times there's factors, there's genetic changes, and that's where more advanced therapies can come in. So the biologic medications can make a big difference. Diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is a point scale. You have to look at joint involvement, you have to get blood testing, you have to actually check what's inside the joint and how long it's going on. And not just that, you have to rule out other disease like psoriasis, gout, and other autoimmune diseases. Things that work really well as well are proper shoes. I'm a big fan of having more of a heel lift, a lot of foam to offload that heel, the front of the foot. That can make a huge improvement to take pressure off there, especially with rheumatoid arthritis. People have ball of the foot pain. You can essentially get a cushioned shoe with a rocker bottom that you roll through that takes pressure off your ankle takes pressure off your foot. I have a lot of great guides on my favorite shoes. The proper shoe in rheumatoid arthritis can make all the difference. It prevents the stretching and inflammation of certain joints and ligaments. I've seen symptomatic people with the proper shoe get immediate relief and for long periods of time. Insoles are unbelievable too. You can get pre-made insoles that can work really well, especially with metatarsal padding to get pressure off the big toe joint, the ball of the foot. And if you're talking about someone in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and you've been doing good most of your life, but now you're starting to have pain, these insoles can do almost all the benefit for you to get pressure off that front of the foot. I have had patients with rheumatoid arthritis be able to get off their medications simply from the proper shoes and the proper insoles. And this is an area where custom orthotics can be extremely important. And hey, if you're in Michigan, come check me out. And if that doesn't do it, an ankle brace on top of that can make a huge difference to hold that ankle straight, to hold that foot straight. That makes a big, big difference. Just doing those three things for the foot and ankle can get rid of the vast majority of people's pain. And also omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are amazing. There has been a meta-analysis that looked at almost 150,000 patients. It improves blood flow, decreases inflammation, all that adds up is just so beneficial and so proven. So you want to be getting about 1.1 grams to 1.6 grams of omega-3 fatty acids per day. Now, omega-6 fatty acids contribute to inflammation and omega-3 fatty acids lower it in the right ratio. The ratio should be about one to one, but right now we get about 25 omega-6s to about one omega-3s. That's not good. So you want to supplement with your omega-3s. Omega-3 fatty acids are just so well studied. The dosages now are so affordable. They used to be really expensive, but they studied 149,000 patients in a meta-analysis. It helps for anti-inflammation, improves joint health, adds a lubrication effect, helps blood flow to the area. This is a must-take supplement for pretty much all problems out there for your daily regimen. If you click the links below, it supports the channel, and I really appreciate you guys for doing so. As well as your turmeric, some joint supplements as well. Turmeric is one of the most popular supplements for treating pain, including joint pain caused by osteoarthritis. Turmeric is so well studied, there's literally hundreds if not thousands of studies which all come to the same conclusion. Turmeric can be just as effective as an anti-inflammatory, has anti-inflammatory effect. It's relatively safe, although I go over the 10 potential side effects, especially as a blood thinner. It can help thin the blood, which for most people is a good thing. Some people, not a good thing. Dosages are about 500 milligrams, two to four times per day for your joint pain. And then you want to look at foods. 
Through foods, you get natural nutrients that can help your muscle and your joint function, which is so proven and so strong. You want to be getting at least 1.6 grams of protein per day to maintain your muscle mass to be strong. So you want to be eating some muscle friendly foods. You also, number two, want to be getting creatine from your foods. A lot of these foods have creatine in them. Creatine is shown to increase the energy in your muscles, keeps you more mobile, more focused, more energetic. And you also want to be getting HMB. If you're getting older and your muscle mass is breaking down, you're getting weaker, you're getting more frail, consider HMB. That's something that can really help strengthen and support your muscle mass in your joints, keep them better aligned. And what about supplements? There are so many great supplements out there. I'm a big fan of these in order. My number one favorite supplement is turmeric. Turmeric is just so effective at taking care of the inflammation. A lot of studies show incorporating turmeric can lower your inflammation almost as good and just about as good as some anti-inflammatories. This has been shown in studies. There is also great options as well for maintaning your cartilage or glucosamine and chondroitin. There's a lot of great studies that these can help prevent breakdown of cartilage, limit inflammation in a lot of cases. Glucosamine and chondroitin are usually taken together, so the results are pretty similar. Some people get some good relief and prevention of cartilage degradation, but it won't reverse your cartilage. Give it a try, see if it helps for you. And the big secret with rheumatoid arthritis, as you're doing all these anti-inflammatory treatments, you want to get a biomechanical exam. When I look at people, how straight are your knees? How straight are your feet? How straight are your hips? All that adds up to get pressure off your joints. And essentially the shoes, the orthotics, the ankle braces, strong muscles, physical therapy, all that adds up to make such a big difference for you. That's the big secret. Check out our guides on how to fix your foot, your knee, your hip alignment at home naturally.